also a traditional Jewish, Christian, and Muslim. Atheist and agnostic as well as many people. Hey, Preston. Hi, Katie. Who do you do today? <laughs> uh, but I don't, don't feel like that's a strong opening. <laughs> well, you're supposed to say great thing, but all right. See, I wasn't treating who is how when well, you said it. <laughs> you make a better pun on this episode of The, the Holy, Holy Watermelon, Watermelon Podcast. Podcast. We're into Spooktober. So as we have traditionally done in at least a few of our foregoing years, we've leaned into those traditions that are seen as spooky, whether for good or bad reasons. Right. Today, we're going to talk about hoodoo, which is different from, actually very different from voodoo. We did voodoo a few years. Like it's been a couple it's of years. It's been a couple of years, yeah. Um, unfortunately, we wasted the pun on voodoo you think you are and it would have been way better for who do you think you are right but whatever <laughs> here we are rude awakening is cute too they kind of started the same though their origins are similar well when we first started planning our voodoo episode those couple years ago a friend of mine said to me that hoodoo is basically like protestantism to voodoo as, i think that's as Catholic, in Catholic. the show you said that in the show and now that we sounds have, likely now we have to correct it maybe we've learned a lot i mean there there are ways where that's a fair analogy but it's not really a correct way to map it i just don't want people to take it literally as the syncretic like we talked about roman catholic saints became their deities and they mashed them up that did mm -hmm. not happen with hoodoo right so Protestantism, Catholicism, as in like their cousins, sure, but not a one for one. Right. No, I, I, I think the, each, the idea say. that makes it a fair analogy that, you know, Protestantism is a breakaway of Catholicism. Hoodoo right. is in some ways derived from voodoo, though not really completely. They have the same parents, so they're actually even like one removed you know what i mean yeah Whereas, like yeah. catholicism came out of, or sorry protestantism came out of catholicism whereas voodoo and hoodoo came out of vodun predominantly right there's some other things in there but they both came out of vodun in west africa yeah as their parents so there's some links as opposed to mother and child yeah it's not a great <laughs> analogy but it's <laughs> It's almost fair when you look at just how to observe them. It's almost yeah, fair. Yeah. Yeah. So, hoodoo began in the American South by enslaved African Americans. And as we mentioned, it's an amalgamation of traditional African spiritual practices. And it also includes elements of botany from indigenous cultural practices as well. Yeah, I was reading a, a cool paper that you sent me. I don't know how much of it you read. I read, but, uh, I'd say, 40% of it. That's not bad. <laughs> it's a good paper. And it talks a lot about this history of how the slaves that were brought over interacted with the Native Americans as much as the white people tried to prevent it as much as possible unless there was violence involved. Right. I read that as well. And there was a point, <laughs> I forget which state, um, I, I forget which state, but one of the states in the southern United States, had more black and indigenous people. Like, the ratio was four to one. Yeah. So, very easy for hoodoo to come about. And obviously, the white plantation owners were not happy that there was... Yeah. Instead all the of... oppressed people were talking to each other. <laughs> uh, but there was just so many of them. So, it's not a surprise that their cultures merged. Right. Well, and Native Americans also would own slaves, as well as... Some many of them were enslaved as well. Um, the enslaving of the Native Americans, bad news, but doesn't really give us a whole lot of information on the religious syncretism that we're using, talking about today. But them owning slaves, they were basically lords and serfs rather than slaves and slave owners, uh, in many cases, not all of them. Um, but the, the relationships they had with each other, I think is really cool that they shared a lot of their religious magic practice. I thought that was really nifty. Yeah. Um, it also, Huda's really interesting. It also incorporates beliefs from Islam, um, 
I, I write about it later in the notes. I'm going to mention it now. But the Mandingo population of West Africa, particularly Sierra Leone, it, to this day is 99% Muslim. And those right. were actually the first group of people brought over in the slave trade. So uh, lots of Islamic influences as well. For which sure. Is super neat. Yeah. Um, oh, what's his name? Louis Farrakhan. Mm. Um, often called Black Hitler for well-deserved reasons. Yeah. Um, and he's one of the the big preachers that talks a lot about how we need to restore Black Islam to African American people. Problem is, the Islam that he's giving them is not the Islam they left behind. Right. <laughs> um, I think it's in the color purple where they talk about. Um, I mean, it's a historical fiction novel, but converting Africa to Christianity. One lady says, we were Christian long before you were, because it's right there. Right. You know, Jerusalem's right there. We were. Well, we and, knew about Jesus long before you did. And with our conversation with uh, Dr. Sean Hannon, he talked a lot about how most of what we see as Christianity today, a lot of that came to us from African men. Yeah. Um, <laughs> People who practice hoodoo are called root workers or root doctors. Uh, I think this ties into the botany side of things. And we'll talk more about what the practices are like. There are places <laughs> where the use of the word hoodoo has been suppressed. I mean, that's why we do these episodes. Anyways, people think they're evil and black magic and all sorts of stuff. Um, they're not. But the, the word conjure is often used. Uh, and some people in this... this um, Paper Preston's referring to, she, ref the author, um, refers it to it it's, as hoodoo conjure throughout the article. Yeah, every time it's both words, yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah. Though, uh, in um, non-academic use, I don't know if they're paired together as often. <laughs> it's easier to say one word instead of two almost all the time. So people usually pick a favorite word. <laughs> people are lazy don't give me that look i know i'm just trying to think of an instance where like if you only said one of the two words it would be very confusing i can't think of any not off the top of my head. um i mean if you were to use one word instead of the other like if i were to hoodoo up a thing that that's guaranteed to be seen as a problematic sentence yeah <laughs> yeah rather than conjuring up a thing Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty problematic. Yeah. So don't do that. Yeah. Right. Replacing words that often go together with the other word doesn't always work. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Preston. <laughs> words guy. During the transatlantic slave trade, 12 million Africans, predominantly from Central and West Africa, were brought to the United States. A whole bunch more were also brought to the Caribbean. We're not even dealing with those numbers yet. We've talked about voodoo before. <laughs> Isn't that a horrifying number? That's huge. Like, and that's even a lot of people today. And so this was, like, 200 years ago. This is before the world population hit a billion people. We're at 8 billion, and Canada still has, this what? Is, yeah, half we're, of... We're sitting close to 40? 30, 30, I always think it's, like, 33, 35, somewhere in there. It, it's less than 40 million. Yeah, so this is, like, half our population. This is a lot more than half of our population at, in that particular Absolutely, year. but like right now, it's almost <laughs> half our population. Yeah. And that's horrifying. It's yeah. probably a third of our population. It's closer to a third of our population. But that's still horrifying. And our population has boomed a lot. At the time when this Af Atlantic slave trade was actively happening, Canada's population didn't count for 12 million people. Who? Oh, actually, I forgot to say a very important thing. Tell me more. Sorry, I'm going to jump back to the origin. Do it. But Nix Roberts, he's a hoodoo expert and practitioner. And he was quoted to say that hoodoo started off as a way of survival, a way of maintaining our cultures and traditions as African people. And then we talk about the slave trade and 12 million people. That was the segue. But <laughs> we'll just go back. It's a good segue. Thank you. Yeah, 12 million is a lot. Especially back then. Mm -hmm. um, so, Hoodoo incorporates the Bakongo religion, a belief in spirits including the Simbi and the Nikishi, 
as well as influences of Vodun. So there's a, a good handful of things being combined here together as people are looking for a way to survive and maintain what they have left of their heritage as they are brought so far from home. Yeah, and similar to what happened in Haiti with voodoo, many slaves were forced into Christianity, um, but they didn't really syncretize the same way. No, different people, different space did things differently. And again, this, these indigenous influences, I think, had a huge impact, especially once we dive into these beliefs and practices. Yeah. Well, so in the southern states, uh, there was a lot of a lot of places. I'm not going to say universally this is the case, but a, a lot of the time it was the case where even though there was a a little bit of freedom for enslaved peoples to to move around within very tight boundaries and meet together in the southern states, if there was a bunch of them meeting together, there would also be a white guy there to police them, which definitely has an effect on how you practice anything yeah supervision can suck yeah that's why i'm self-employed yeah good good call thank you <laughs> if i want to take a nap i'm taking a nap absolutely but then when you're employed it's only you can't sleep on work time katie right we're not paying you to sleep well <laughs> then don't <laughs> uh, Okay, so <laughs> what do voodoo practitioners actually believe and practice? They There's practice a, a lot. I yeah. won't say they don't believe a lot, but they believe... They believe in what they do. It's more spiritual than... Yeah. I even read some things that were like, it's not a religion. I wouldn't go that far. Um, no. Almost all... We've dealt with a lot of things where people, people are like, that's not a religion. I'm like, Buddha no, this absolutely is a religion. <laughs> but on that spectrum of religion. It's, we, we've talked a little bit about this spectrum of orthopraxy versus orthodoxy. Which is praxy. And yeah, we worry a lot more about correct, correctly practicing rather than correctly believing. So they don't focus on any deities in particular or at least that i could find their biggest pl place focus of worship is ancestor worship um, there is belief though in good spirits and bad spirits and a lot of that spiritual help is focused on the natural world which we'll get into things um like mojo bags yeah i dug a little bit into what constitutes a bad spirit uh, and we'll get a little bit more into what the ancestor worship looks like. But if somebody dies full of hatred and you don't deal with their death and burial appropriately, then when somebody calls on them, it's going to be really easy to use them for bad energy mm, is the idea behind the bad spirits versus good spirits of people who are gen generally benevolent and helpful in life are likely to be the same way in death. Nice. So ancestor worship, I think, is a really nifty thing and I found a few sources that really kind of mapped it out in, I think, a really nice way. We've talked about ancestor worship before. It's not a thing that is rare on this planet. Yeah. Um, and I sent you a video. Let's share mm -hmm. that video in the Discord. I thought it explained for sure, it for sure. really well. I'll touch on it a little bit if, if I'm sure the notes will lead us there. But Yeah. So among the most important things lost in the forced migration across the Atlantic is the connection between generations and ancestral shrines and their lands. Uh, and conveniently coming to America, the indigenous population here also understands connection to land and the, the history that a family holds there. So another thing that they're able to share and build value is they change, exchange ideas. So ancestor worship isn't as foreign as one might think. Uh, in fact, practically speaking, it's pretty much indistinguishable from the imperial Christian veneration of saints. You've got St. Andrew and St. Thomas and whoever, whatever it is Saint that you pray to. Love St. Bernard and his happy wet dream. <laughs> Good old milkshake boy. Um, so there's use of relics. Um, not just for, um, oh, why is the word gone? Not just for talismans, 
and things like that, but also just things to remember. Yeah, and I'll just by. clarify, at least in the video that we'll share on Discord, and then I saw the relics aren't necessarily body bits. Like they Usually not, have, like, but sometimes. Be, <laughs> if it is, it'll be more like a lock of hair as opposed to like right. a finger bone. Um, but it's, you know. Just trying not to be creepy. Yeah, it's like jewelry <laughs> or possessions or yeah. a watch or, you know, that your grandpa had. Is, yeah. That's kind of the relics we're talking Things about. Things that you would normally expect Cheap. to inherit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice reminders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's icons. You've always got family photos. Um, a lot of hoodoo practitioners and believers will have a really good collection of ancestors that they'll have in a, a family shrine type thing. And these will often include people who go back even further than living memory. Like pictures of, for example, me having pictures of my great-great-grandparents. I never met them, but I can still call on them for help. That sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so prayers for intercession, just like with the saints, perfectly reasonable to expect. And also sharing stories with friends and family, you know, so that people can add value to these pictures that mm -hmm. they see on the wall. All of the sorts of things that you would see in worship. <laughs> yep. Because saints are worshipped. Yeah. doesn't matter who tells you otherwise. <laughs> So most people are interested in asking for guidance with people who have walked a similar path. Relying on honored parents and grandparents is typical. This lady in the video also says now that they're on the ancestral plane, they have a whole bunch of knowledge that we don't have on Earth. So I thought that was kind of nice. Right. So reach out and ask for help. Ask yeah, for help. And that, especially in a culture and a religion that's rooted in slavery, she also talks about how... Um, like they did all the hard work, so she not so she doesn't have to, but she can do the next step for the next generation. Right. I thought that was well. It's really like all of the the scientific education that we push on eight year olds, right? Is build that foundation of stuff that people took generations to learn, yeah, so that you can carry that education forward and learn more. Also, that we take for granted, right? Our our <sighs> education system is failing mostly because people in power don't understand its value so that's very frustrating so sharing objects of worship like ancestors is a potent tool for binding a community so sharing ancestors and sharing veneration of those ancestors builds a strong sense of family beyond what is typical in the european american focus on the nuclear family there's there are some exceptions that there are every now and then you'll see news because apparently it's newsworthy when there's a really big family reunion. Because most of us are focused on the immediate family. Parents and kids. Huh? Yeah. I actually really kind of appreciate this lady talking about generations back. I'm like, I should right? dig up photos of my grandparents and put them out somewhere. Yeah. Usually, from what I've observed, if there is any interest in connecting with broader family outside of the nuclear family, it's usually religious people. Not always, but usually, because religion has a tendency to motivate that kind of connection. I mean, I'm thinking of like the, I mean, my husband's family is actually, on his mom's side, is quite good about it, but the other family I'm thinking of is very Catholic, and they have their matriarch, and everyone kind of gathers around that mm -hmm. so anyway. yeah uh, well i've got one side of my family that never does any family reunions not a religious family overtly in any way that i've ever noticed and then on the other side um much more subdued religiously as a group um and quite varied in religious tradition as well but historically as religious people we've had more family reunions mm. yeah that's interesting Another practice of hoodoo is herbalism, and that's going to tie in our next next practice as well. And natural remedies are important first steps in dealing with things like illnesses and spiritual ailments. Yeah, always see your your root worker first. I wanted to say witch doctor. That phrase does not come up in this tradition. No. Nope. <laughs> Even though it's, I guess, more appropriate. It's not the right word. It's more visible. I was, you, I was gonna you, say you run across you run it's... across the phrase witch doctor a little bit more often than root doctor. I don't like it worker. because it 
gives the wrong impression. But, it does. But you're right, it's more, you know, yeah, familiar is a good word. But. Yeah. Nearly anything can serve some sort of purpose, though specific traditions traditions are tied to specific elements depending on inherited traditions of the practitioner in question. So kind of like Wicca, hoodoo practitioners will have their own book of recipes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I found some. You could find them. Um, starter guides on Amazon. Some really old hoodoo recipe books. Yeah. Um, one of the more frustrating things about, I would say... Not just hoodoo, but of all of the magic crafts. I don't want to say witchcrafts. I want to. I want to more broaden it to the yeah. magic craft. Is that it's really easy to become over commercialized. Fair. And we definitely see that with hoodoo, especially in the southern states, yeah. where it is strong and visible. I will say though, I ended up on the, and I encourage our listeners to go on the subreddit for Hoodoo Conjure. Hmm. And I was trying to research, like, origin stuff, but it really was people, like, there's one person, I say, say lady, I don't know. It's Reddit. <laughs> can't, can't see gender on Reddit. <laughs> no, there's no gender on the internet. Um, and they were like, oh, I found a wasp nest. What can I do with it? And I just had, like, and the, they were evacuated. It was just, like, the... Like, just the, the empty. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> if, if it looks like something's coming back to it, it no. maybe we no. destroy it no, or no. leave it. It was a full <laughs> chunk. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. But, sure. Yeah. Every, everything can have a use. Yeah. And with years of experience and decades and centuries at this point, we have made associations of, oh, this thing is going to do bad things. Might actually be poisonous. This thing might actually be good might actually produce aspirin if you use, mix it up properly. That sort I, of thing. I read one article. This was a fun episode to research, but difficult. Right. And it was an article on ginseng, but mm -hmm. they interviewed a hoodoo practitioner, and they said that ginseng grows in the shape of a walking man, so it's used for, like, confidence and, like, assertive, like, strutting your... I thought that was really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm imagining, like, a ginger root... But more anthropomorphic. I don't actually know for sure that I'm imagining ginseng properly. We'll have to Google it <laughs> after for you. So roots are terribly important, as we've mentioned. I think ginseng is a root. Um, but bones, hair, blood, herbs, flowers, and bark, and apparently wasps. <laughs> anything. Are, anything are used as natural. Right. Metal shavings, you're not making friends. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Much like we see in other magic crafts, it's things get useful, especially if they're not disproven in their utility. So one, I thought this was so interesting, one specific use for this magic and crafting is the mojo bag. So in my head, all I've got is Mojo Jojo from the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> Terrible, but I... <laughs> know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> so Mojo is a flannel bag that carries one or more magical items. It is worn by a person for protection, healing, or to communicate with spirits. This practice actually began in Ghana and is associated with the Islamic tradition of warding off jinn. So again, this little bit of Islamic influence that's just like thrown into hoodoo. I yeah. kind of love it. So again, the Mandingo people I mentioned, um, the, this Muslim group from Sierra Leone, huge group of people transported in the slave trade. They were known specifically for conjuring and making powerful mojo bags. And this is during the slave trade that other slaves from other ethnic groups would go to the Mandingo for these mojo bags to protect them. That's cool. So, and because they were very Muslim, uh, Quranic verses, herbs, roots, etc., were all common ingredients in mojo bags. Sure. Just like um, earlier Christians would often use biblical passages yeah. in their talismans. But I just, again, we, there's so much Islamophobia, right? Like we right. think Islam is like new and we, I mean, we talked about this I mean, for Dr. those people West. who hate Islam and black people, this isn't helping either of their case. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but like we talk, you know, we talk about like Dr. West and people so scared about Sharia law, like Islam has been in on on North America for hundreds of years. Yeah. 
kind of cool. Um, Mandingo is a name that I really enjoy seeing in writing because every time I have to think to get past the initial thing that comes into my mind, which is an Australian werewolf, the Mandingo. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. You can hate me. <laughs> I, sometimes I wish this was a visual medium because the look I'm giving Preston. <laughs> um, um, another one that I'll talk about because I did the research for it. Mm -hmm. And it was more convoluted research. Um, is the ring shout. And it was convoluted because the origins are disputed. Sure makes anything tough. Yeah, so a ring shout is a lively ceremony where people run counterclockwise in a circle around a person. In the mainstream, this is popular with revitalist Christian churches. But like you said, it has this weird murky origin. So some people think it could have come from the Muslim practice of circling the Kaaba. Right. The Arabic word shout, shout, S-H-A-W-T, could be where the shout comes from. Mm -hmm. Because in a ring shout, shouting isn't actually required. It's mostly just the running. Right. And so it's not walking. It's no. running. Running or dancing. Mm -hmm. um, so. Like you might praise, but there's no like shouting is not the goal. Right. So that's why some people think this Arabic word, um, again, with the Islamic influence and the circling of the Kaaba could be where this is from. Um, yeah. So West African Muslims brought this practice over to America. And during the slave trade, it was adopted by Hoodoo and eventually Black Christianity. Um, That's an interesting path. We don't see a whole lot of Islamisms in voodoo. Not like we see in in hoodoo. Yes. It's nifty. And then I think we're going to have to, um, maybe after October is done, is dive into black Christianity. Because there's this path of like hoodoo with Islamic influences turning into black Christianity, which then, inf which still exists. Mm-hmm. It's own little, it's not a denomination, but we'll say subculture Christianity. But that then heavily influences evangelical Christianity. Yeah. So one of the videos I watched, I don't know if it was the one I sent to you or a different one. They talk about like speaking in tongues. Well, that comes from being possessed by spirit in the hoodoo and voodoo tradition. Yeah, it's... And then it got into to black like Christianity. <laughs> and then these charismatic preachers showed up and then it became popular in the 60s but all this comes from these traditions that so many wasps are scared of <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's interesting to me how much i'll call it africanisms define the christianity for everybody around the world yeah so Sorry, back to the ring show. But in American hoodoo practice, the ring show is used to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Sounds like a, a decently good thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Because, and this is like modern American hoodoo, Holy Spirit. It's a positive spirit because of Christian influence, which they've influenced each other. It's considered what you would consider the Holy Spirit. And talismans and charms are common to protect against other conjurers, which is a thing that people will worry a lot about. Because as much as there's all kinds of good conjuring that can be done, there are bad herbs out there, which empowers people who want to do bad things. Yeah, and, and one of the articles I read, because there was a lot of article reading. <laughs> no kidding. Um, is that, again pop culture and, and scared white people um, have sort of villainized hoodoo, but oh, yeah. hoodoo is in itself is neutral, much like Wicca. Yeah. If you're a good person and you do good things with it, then it's good. If you're a bad person and you use your magic for evil, well. Yeah. I mean, you can Christian, say the same about Christianity. <laughs> There, there are a lot of people who use Christianity for evil, too. Yeah, if you weaponize your Christianity. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. It's, but the, it is built to be more utilitarian. 
because there isn't a dogma that everybody has to believe. There's no centralized authority that keeps everybody in line. It's just there's a way to practice, and there's a way of knowing what does good things, what does bad things, what are you going to do with it. Yeah. And so it's kind of nifty. And there are ways to protect against those people who do bad things, at least in theory. And, I mean, Christians have been doing the same thing, so they don't get to call it weird. <laughs> <laughs> so let's break down the difference between voodoo, hoodoo, and there's actually a couple others with the same... That are very similar. With the same mommy and daddy over in West Africa, <laughs> as we said. There are a, a good variety, I think, of... We'll call them cousins. Okay. So we talked about voodoo, like I said, a couple of years ago. But let's, for those people who haven't listened, you should go back and listen now. Um, right. Get a little bit more in-depth and what we're going to give you here in less than a minute. Yes. But yeah, let's go back to voodoo, <laughs> differentiate from hoodoo, and then talk about some of the other cousins. All right. So voodoo developed primarily in the Caribbean, um, really quite centered in Haiti, according to what everybody is saying. So that's what I have to accept. Hispaniola. <laughs> right. And it tends to be more dogmatic about the deities than um, what we've been talking about in hoodoo, um, that there are a variety of specific gods that are treated more like saints now that there's a lot of Catholic syncretism, really, is the thing that caused that. Um, the, an interesting phrase that I came across, I might have come across it before, but it, it's never captured my attention the way it has recently. Diffused monotheism. And if I came across it, I'm not sure how I let it slip by. No, I Because it actually before. bugs me. <laughs> oh, interesting. Um, this term, I feel like it's a little novel, Basic is basically polytheism with an agreed upon supreme deity. So Hinduism. <laughs> right? Um, and, I mean, as we talked about with Hinduism, it's polytheism, but it's also monism, but it's also henotheism. Um, is it one of them? Is it pan or panentheism? Uh, pantheism is everything is God. Panentheism is, is God everything, everything is in God, but God is more than everything. Yeah, Hindu is one of them, but I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it depends who you talk to is the trick. But yeah, and I guess so. This diffused monotheism it bugs me a little bit because we already have enough terms that describe <laughs> it. Um, I guess. Have, there's a supreme deity, and there's no competition between the deities. You just go to l the the deity you need that is connected to the thing, knowing that he ultimately answers to the main one anyway, or so, she. That's just polytheism. That's the Greek pantheon and Zeus. The Greek pantheon, the gods are genuinely competing with one another. That's fair. Um, this, this diffused monotheism is more more like what we see in Christianity where there are multiple gods, but there, there is a supreme God and they're all unified in, in at least some aspect of their purpose. Okay. I don't love it. It's a weird term, but I, I imagine we're going to see more of it. <laughs> well, there's your thesis, Preston. So voodoo is a tradition that brought us fellows like Baron Samity and brought us monsters like the zombies. Yeah. So actual deities that people uh, in voodoo try to be possessed by or try to, you know, bring them into their presence, which we don't see. Yeah, voodoo's not worried about that. And I, so voodoo developed in the United States, and this is where I was confused for a little bit because there is so much voodoo in Louisiana is sort of the, the hotbed. Well, but because that was of the Haitian, Haitian immigration yeah. into the state. So hoodoo is, I want to say uniquely American, but that's where it was born, is in America. Hoodoo was born in Haiti. Um, and it, yeah, syn syncretized Native American and some Christian and Islam practices. There's no gods, deities. And yeah, it's without this special collection of hoodoo specific gods, it makes it really easy 
to also be Christian, whether Catholic or Protestant, whatever. You've got a variety of Christianities to choose from, or it doesn't even have to be Christian. You can belong to another church or congregation and, and still be into hoodoo. Yeah. So with that being said, in many ways, ho or hoodoo conjurers and root workers can be compared to Celtic Europeans mm -hmm. who talk about the cunning who adapted their system to accommodate Christianity. It's a little funky, but it works for them. It sure does. <laughs> They're so worried about leprechauns and fairies. Right. <laughs> now there's, you know, the the Caribbean equivalent. Yeah, absolutely. Or Gulf Coast equivalent, if you will. <laughs> I think European folk religious practices are far more similar to hoodoo than most people are happy to admit. There's a lot of this magic craft, a lot of just what a lot of people will call superstitious practice uh, that works its way into all of this. And if it ever looks like it works, it's going to be done again and again. It's hard to say that there's documented proof of this trade of ideas. I between... read this theory as well. Yeah, but... that there's the trade of ideas between European magic practitioners and African magic practitioners. I mean, people have been traveling, traveling around the world for as long as people have been on the world. So it's easy to say, oh, yeah, there's some defense for it. It makes sense. Um, but it, we can't point at a specific thing and say, oh yeah, this is definitely a thing. traded across from this group to that one. It's a, it's a fair hypothesis. Yeah, it makes sense. It's just really hard to concretely defend. The magic craft of prehistory was always a traded set of ideas. Mm -hmm. and I mean, even more recently, we've got lots of people who will take up one magic craft and trade ideas with people from slightly different regions or even further traditions. Yeah, it's nifty stuff. Yeah. Next on our list, we have Santeria. You mean the song by Sublime? <laughs> it makes way more sense now that I know about Santeria. Yeah. So Santeria was developed in Cuba. Uh, it's most visible today in Western Cuba. Um, it's a syncretic tradition developed from African Yoruba and Roman Catholic religions. Uh, Catholicism was the only religion legally permitted in Cuba by the Spanish colonists because, you know, imperialism. Yay! Yay. <laughs> uh, and most of the imported sl enslaved peoples were of the Yor Yoruba tradition. So, of the things you had available... You syncretized. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's more similar to voodoo than it is to hoodoo. Uh, being interested in a primary creator god that is a little dogmatized. And several saints or orica, uh, which also serve as a set of sort of horoscopically assigned guardians and the root of personality. It was it was kind of nifty to read up on that. I'm good. Um, yeah, it's your horoscope... You know, which we have found out is not what we thought it was at all. Oh, fucus. <laughs> there was something right? the other day that I was like, oh, well, they forgot a fucus. <laughs> and anytime someone's like on social media, is like, blah, 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 find your horse. Like, even if it's like, I'm thinking of like, press on nails or anything. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, our zodiac collection. I'll be like, you forgot a fucus. Right. I'm just Correct like a, yourself. Like, I'm just a shit disturber now. <laughs> yeah, there was something like that. It wasn't press on the else, but it was literally like some product. It was like necklaces. And they were like, check out our Zodiac collection. I was like, you forgot a few kids. <laughs> you put all this work into doing the Zodiacs and you left one out. You left what a bunch one of noobs. <laughs> uh, so, join me on my mission. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I interrupted. I love it. <laughs> I think it's really nifty that there is this sort of, are, I don't know, are you familiar with name days that is, is a thing in Europe? So like if your name is Stephen, your your name day is St. Stephen's Feast Day, y yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like that, but not quite the same. Okay. 
uh, where there is this orica that is given, it, it's decided by some means that this one affects your personality and is more or less your guardian or helper throughout all of your life, which is really quite nifty. And But they basically function as saints that you would see in Catholicism and are deliberately mapped on that way in this syncretic tradition. Right. Yeah, it's really nifty. Also, shrines are a bigger deal than in Hoodoo. Um, most, you'll have your, your personal shrine family of family shrine. members and stuff in your home, but there are, all, there are also community gathering places uh, in house temples where somebody might in their home have uh, have made their home open to to people to come to a, a bigger sort of shrine wow. yeah neat rather than say the mormon temple which is a special big place with locked doors and a dude at the gate who says no you can't come in it's a lot more open and f a different kind of family friendly <laughs> Next time there's a reno and it needs to be re whatever rededicated. Rededicated. I'm, you can go in. Did you not make it to the last one we went down to in Calgary? That's fair. It's all the way down in Calgary. But now I would go as far as uh, as far as Calgary. <laughs> no, what's the other one? Cardston. Cardston. Sure. Yeah, I go as far as Cardston. Yeah, that's fair. Because it doesn't happen very often. Right. I'd almost prefer Cardston. It's huge. It is, it's, it's, significant. it's not as big as it looks like it should be. I mean, nobody lives in Cardston. I mean, except Mormons, which is why. There are plenty of non-Mormons in Cardston. They're now. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a reason that the first temple in Alberta was built in Cardston. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. Uh -huh. So Santeria is kind of interesting that recent efforts have actually been made to separate Santeria from its syncretic Catholic elements, um, trying to bring it back into line with more ancient Yoruba traditions, which I think is really nifty. Um, and it's easy enough to do. You just look at what's still happening in Africa and pull out those things that are kind of obviously Catholic. <laughs> um, Though there are still a lot of people who are happily Catholic and still dealing with this Santeria tradition on a regular basis. And so they're not necessarily keen on separating the two, but I don't know if it's a whole lot of a bother to them either. It'll be like any religion and they'll divide. Some will be exactly what they're doing now. Some will be more Catholic. Some will be more Yoruba. Some will probably just start practicing Yoruba. Yeah. Yeah, it's a wonderful freedom that we get to enjoy. <laughs> right. Uh, um, everything's but... made up and the points don't matter. <laughs> I mean, that was very atheist of me, but everything's I mean, made up and the points don't matter. Every religion God agrees is true that theory. all of the things that everybody else is doing is made up. So... <laughs> Just when you get to heaven, it'll be like Drew Carey behind the desk from Who's Line. Uh, there's not very He's not many doing hosts. it anymore. It's Aisha Tyler now. That's right. She's Aisha been doing it for Tyler. a while. I'd like to see her. Uh, I can I never die. remember the guy who was doing it before Drew Carey. I love well, how long the, the British, show was running. There was the British yeah. one. So yeah. is that who you're thinking of? Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh. I can picture him in my mind. Right? right? Same. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, like Hoodoo, Santeria is really a lot more concerned about correct practice rather than correct belief, even though they do have their collection of gods to worry about, like Voodoo. Yeah. Um, quite similar to Santeria is Ken Domblay. Uh, it is, again, same parent idea from actually Benin. Uh, it developed in Brazil. It's very similar to Voodoo and Santeria. Uh, it's heavily influenced by Roman Catholicism and worships a pantheon of deities and spirits. And many practitioners of Candomblé are also Roman Catholics. So I wrote my notes. I'm sure the cat, the Pope doesn't like that. So the Pope made a few visits fairly recently 
going all over the place, telling people that we're not going to stop you from doing these weird things that the rest of us aren't doing, but please focus on the good things. And if you believe what you're doing is good, then it can't be all that bad. It's maybe an oversimplification of his words, but... <laughs> and this Pope. But maybe yeah. the next Pope, and definitely not the last Pope. I'm yeah. Sure didn't like it. Um, Francis is a lot more liberal than most Popes. <laughs> yeah. Ken, if you're believing Ken, um, Ken Dumbley... Uh, I don't know if they're practitioners or believers, but these people believe in Oleron. He is the supreme being and the creator. But they believe that this deity is far away and removed. So just like deism. And so he's not worshipped. Just recognized. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to Santeria, though, they have spirits or Arisha um, that have been like syncretized with saints. Um, they are morally ambiguous, depending uh, so on... So are a lot of the saints. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Um, but I'll, like I mentioned the Greek pantheon, like you're just asking the ones you need for what you need when you need them. Yeah. So they each have their own virtues and character flaws, and then specific colors, foods, animals, etc. are associated with each of them. So depending on who you need and what you need from them, that will change what your magic or your shine looks like. Makes sense. There's always favorite colors. I think if I were a spirit, my favorite color would be yellow. Yeah? I think it'd just be easy to find. Okay. Like, green's my actual favorite color, but, like, how do you know it's not just a tree? <laughs> Did they plant right. that for me, or is that just there? Right. You gotta wait till autumn, and then all the trees are yours. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but only for a short time. That's right. Yeah. So... Uh, we mentioned this before, hoodoo intersects with black Christianity and some practices we see in hoodoo and black Christianity have made their way into the evangelical church, um, like speaking in tongues. Um, it's always bewildered me that somebody finds it useful and meaningful to stand up and shout actual just <laughs> gibberish. Hamala hamala. <laughs> um, I grew up in a religious tradition that recognizes the phrase gift of tongues, but it's like tongues as in languages, like we're going to have to minister to people in different languages rather than just the one you grew up with, because this is a diverse planet. Um, but even in the Latter-day Saint tradition, speaking the tongue of angels has popped up here and there. Interesting. Yeah. We should just do a whole episode on not just on speaking in tongues, but things like speaking in tongues. Yeah. The spiritual gifts that are sure. a little questionable. They're all questionable. Discernment's <laughs> my favorite. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really interesting. Um, and yeah, I think we probably should look into Black Christianity a little bit more. And this, this path that has made it different from the rest of the Christianity that we see. Yes, I think that's one where we should find a guest. Yeah. I'll put my feelers out, but if anyone listening knows someone who um, is an expert in black Christianity, um, probably better than two white folk talking about it. Right. I came so close to visiting an African Methodist Episcopal church when I was living in New Jersey. Cool. I mean, it didn't happen, so it's not that cool. Oh. But I came close to visiting. <laughs> I came close to being useful. <laughs> this is the worst story I've ever heard. Uh, and yeah, my so I've met people who, who go to those kinds of churches, but it's been a long time since that I've made that connection. So That's fine. Got to start fresh somewhere. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts on hoodoo? I think it's really interesting. I like how different it is from voodoo even though the names are almost identical. I know. At first I was like, why are we even doing this? They're the same thing. And I was proven wrong. I feel enlightened. Um, I think it's interesting that this, there's a lot of magic craft in the world today that seems to defy that the pattern that we had brought up when we first started this show, that so many scholars think that there's this natural evolution where we abandon magic in favor of polytheism. 
and then we abandon polytheism in favor of monotheism, and then abandon monotheism in favor of science. There are so many exceptions to that that it's it's getting pretty hard to defend that thesis. It really is. Um, I also really like hoodoo because it doesn't feel linear. Sure, yeah. You know, it has so many influences to it um, that are really neat. And then, you know, we could have really deep dive into each of the African religions that influences it, but we're probably better to do African religions in their own episodes. Um, I think it's fair to say, and this definitely came up in our talk with Dr. Sean Hannon, that all of the religions, all of the traditions whether religious or not, I think is a fair expansion on that idea, are affected by their neighbors. We are affected by our neighbors. And what we do changes from generation to generation. We adopt ideas that we like from our neighbors. Sometimes we are forced to adopt ideas that maybe we don't like. <laughs> That's fair. And I mean, we certainly see a lot of that in hoodoo, but even Christianity is a lot different today in every denomination than what we see mapped out in the New Testament. Absolutely. Christi um, Judaism, as we see it today, very different than what we see in the day of Moses. Religions evolve as nations evolve. My final point is go learn something new. Do it. I learned a lot this week. Right? It's good times. And share it with us on Discord where we have all kinds of good stuff. It's our, our main hub for discussion. Uh, we've also got Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You can also find us on Patreon and Spreadshop where you can give us money in exchange for goods or services. We've got exclusive episodes. We've got merch. We can make you a priest of the Holy Watermelon. Book club. So many great things. Thanks for joining us. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. By the late Middle Ages, the Christian prophecies had fulfilled itself.